Hey everybody, thank you so much for joining me this evening on a Thursday evening at 8 o'clock UK time, 8pm. Um, my name is Heather, I am the Songbird Stamper and, and I'm an independent Stampin' Up! demonstrator from Fairham in the United Kingdom, so almost right on the south coast. I'm here today with a little bit of live crafting with you. Hey Shaz, nice to see you. So we normally have people kind of popping on um, and then, so if you're watching the catch up, thank you so much for joining us. And uh, if you're hopping on live as well, thank you for spending your evening with me. Hey, Lisa. Lisa, I'm casing a bit of a, one of your cards today. So that'll be exciting. Um, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. So I've got two cards for you this evening, both using the festive and fun stamp set from Stumping Up. This one. Hello. Oh, hey, is that Diane? Oh, you're very welcome, Lisa. Um, we've got a blog hop coming up. This I haven't written it yet this weekend, and um, I could not decide which card, so I cased the two, and I thought I'd share one tonight, and I'll share one on the blog hop. So, um, yeah, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> I hope I do it justice. Let's see. Um, I'm going to spin you over. Good evening, Carol. I'm going to spin you over, and we'll get some crafting done. I'm going to try and get away fairly promptly at nine o'clock because, ah, oh, and lovely to see you too, because um, Russ is due home at nine o'clock from the airport. He's been in Singapore for 10 days. I haven't seen him, so I'm quite keen to see him tonight if I can, although he might well just want to chill and go to bed, to be honest. <laughs> so I'm going to, oh, bless you, no, and honestly, you, your card was beautiful. Really, it's not, it's not a kind of style of card that I can do very well. So I'm going to give it a go. So the first thing I'm going to do is grab a sheet of real red cardstock. Now I'm doing something different. I've decided I'm going rogue for 2024. I'm going to do a lot of um, A5 cards. Yep. So I'm going. I'm going. I'm going to set a trend. Um, I'm going to be a trend setter in this stamping up world for uh, A5 cards because I think they look really nice. My friend Sandy does it. So I'm gonna cut this piece of cardstock to four inches, which is 10 point, well, we'll, do, we'll just do 10, should we do 10 centimeters? Let's do 10 centimeters. I don't really do imperial in my card bases. So 10 centimeters by 14.3. Oh no, I did that wrong, hang on. See, I've gone wrong at the first hurdle. I've been at work, I've been, it's been a long week. I've been at work all week. So I'm gonna cut this down to 10 and a half, because this is the red bit. 10 and a half by 14.8. So basically a quarter of a sheet of A4. Oh, me too. Thank you. Yeah, me too. He's um he's landed. He's text me he's landed. He is getting off the plane and he gets a taxi. And then this piece I'm going to cut to um, 10 by 14.3. So not like a massive amount of difference there. And that's going to be our mat and that's going to be our layer. Um, but then obviously that's the size of a normal card base, that layer. Hey, Mary. But no, you can't get them to balance. Oh, what do you mean? Like the shape of it? Because it is a bit awkward trying to get like four, four of these out of a, a card, like a piece of card and get them to fit on the thing. I just went with them not fitting very well. But they look fine to me. Yeah, I just think an A5 card looks a bit more. Sorry, not A5, it's 7 by 5 Not A5, 7 by 5 I think, is that A5? I don't think it is. Anyway, they look a bit more special, I think. And my friend Sandy makes these all the time. So a big shout out to Sandy. She takes the card design and she layers that on there. And then... It just looks a bit more. It just looks a bit more special, I think. So we're gonna we're gonna go for it. We're gonna see what happens. So we've got our piece of white card, and I'm gonna take this stamp. And I'm. Can you tell I'm winging it? I have got, I have kind of got a plan, but I've changed it last minute. So um, we're gonna grab some memento ink. Oh, you just can't fill the space. Oh, so basically. Uh, no, so okay, yeah, we're not doing A5, we're doing 7x5, and all we're going to do is take the card bit, the card that we would have made and mount it on there, so it leaves a nice white border, and I think they look really, I think they look really good. Hey, Joanna! So we're going to stamp this in memento in the bottom left-hand corner. I'm hoping I can get both these cards done, so I'm going to try my best. 
Um, and we're going to stamp that. It's really hard to see with the camera there, but I'm going to try and stamp him straight. Because he's got a straight neck, so we want the neck to be straight. Shaz, do you? That is, that is good to hear because that's definitely what I want to do. I've pushed a little bit hard on the top of his hat, so it's a bit dark, but I think we'll go for it. We'll go with it. Now what we're going to do is put a sentiment here. So again, I'm going to stamp that in. He's so, he such a good giraffe, isn't he? He's so cute. I love that whole set, actually. I think what happened is I've rigged my memento, and um, it's re-inked more in some places than others. I've not distributed the ink very evenly, so let's see if I can get a decent stamp out of this. And then we're going to try and stamp that straight. I might have to put it down here a bit. Up in the right-hand corner. There we go. I like that. I didn't like the one I did. Um, and I'll show you at the end. I didn't like the one I did. It didn't look right um, earlier. So I've done it this way. Okay. And then we're going to grab our basic black marker. I might even have just copied this, Lisa. I'm not going to lie. I can't even remember your original card. And um, so apologies if I've literally just kind of copied your design and it wasn't purposeful. Um, <laughs> I meant to case it. Anyway, so we're going to get, grab our marker. And I like to hold my marker kind of upright. And we're going to draw like a border around this. Okay. So I'm going to start and I'm, I'm just going to miss this, this kind of beginning bit. So I'm going to start about here. I'm going to try and keep it fairly close to the edge because I'm conscious I want the same kind of border all the way around. Um, but I haven't, I can't go too far in. I hope that makes sense. So we're going to come up here. It's always a bit nerve wracking. We're just going to go for it. And then we're going to draw a couple of like lines here. Yeah, you know the one. You know the one. I may not have done this with the basic black marker. I might have just done it with a pen actually. But you know, I'm there now. So it might be a bit thick line, but I don't normally do this. Um, so it's a bit nerve wracking for me too. And then we'll come along here and we'll do a couple of lines. It's a really fun way to add a border to your cards. I love it. I've done it a few times, but really not very often at all. And then we're going to come down here. My hand is wobbling. And then along here. And then we'll stop about there. So we've just got a nice. Ah, oh, did you? I love that. Do you know what I love that about stamping up? That the eyes, the, the ideas just kind of go round and round in um, circles. I really, I really love that. And then we're just going to colour him in. So I've got Shaded Spruce, Daffodil Delight, Pumpkin Pie, Real Red, uh, Pecan Pie and Grey Granite. Yeah, I really, really liked it. And that's Cherry Cobbler, so that's not the colours I want. I'm not very good. I don't I don't think I'm very good at making um, kind of classy, simple, not, not simple in a horrible way, but just kind of classic cards. Like, I um, I always struggle to know when to stop. So it's really nice because I always think they look so beautiful when I see other people do them. So it's really nice to give it a go every now and again. I'm just using the Daffodil Delight. This is the dark, just to add a bit of shading. And then I'll go and colour him in. So the colouring is what takes the time on this card, not the uh, building of it or anything. It's a fairly like I said, clean and simple, elegant background. I just don't know if elegant's the right word, actually, but you know what I mean. Two 
choosing the colours was quite hard as well. I always felt like I wanted more colours, but couldn't then get them to tie together. It doesn't really matter if you go over the spots because we are going to paint those. I colour them in a, a different, they're like a darker orangey. So how's everyone's week been? Good, I hope. I've had a, I've had a, an all right week at work actually, apart from the last hour when everything seemed to just fall apart. <laughs> Which is just one of those, one of those things, isn't it? You know, such is life. But it's never nice to happen on the last hour at work. Okay, so those two in yellow. It's a bit quicker this time around because I'm not making a decision. I'm just copying what I did last time. It was, it's been a bit of a manic week in the Stampin' Up! world. We have had pre-order, uh, a PPP rather, for those that attended on stage at home. Um, and we've had the last chance list has come out. So there's some um, exciting things that are kind of carrying over or being retired. So that's going to be coming out to everybody soon. Um, what else have we had going on? Oh, we had team training on Saturday. I had my class last Friday, watercolour course on Sunday. I genuinely don't feel like I've stopped. Um, I actually don't think I have stopped, if I'm completely honest. Although my Hogwarts Legacy hour, hours played might be uh, disagreeing with me there. I've done quite a lot of flying over Hogwarts as well. Who's who's got who's got it? Hogwarts Legacy, basically. If you're a bit, a bit of a Harry Potter fan like I am, um, which you may or may not know, um, Hogwarts Legacy came out at the beginning of the year, and I got it for my birthday. Oh, it's wonderful! Absolutely wonderful. I am thoroughly enjoying the game, um, and think. I um, might get lost for the rest of the winter. I'm going to be fighting trolls and goblins. When the weather gets colder and wetter. Not that it can probably get much wetter, to be honest. If you don't have it already, honestly, seriously consider... Seriously consider getting it because it's lovely. Right, so to colour this tree, I've used shaded spruce. Um, and what I've done for the shading of it is just round the edges and underneath underneath these bits, if you can see just underneath there. Just put some shading in. Doesn't need to be massively accurately in the right place, but obviously as the branches are hanging over you would get that shading underneath those sections. And then round the edges if it's like a 3D joke. You're a Philistine. You are a Philistine. Honestly, Mary, how we're friends, I'm not entirely sure. Absolutely outrageous. I think I should inaugurate. Is that the right word? Inaugurate you? You don't know what you're missing out on. It's utterly brilliant. Utterly brilliant. And the game, honestly, the game has, has exceeded my expectations. Um, I almost didn't get it because Russ was like, oh, it's a role-player game. You know, I'm not sure you'd enjoy a role-player game. Um, but little did he know, it genuinely feels like I'm at Hogwarts. Which has always been a bit of a dream of mine. I actually genuinely felt like when I was at Dartmouth um, Naval Academy, I, um, I had the nickname of Hermione because I was a bit of a swat. I still am actually, to be honest, but I'm embracing it more as I get older. Um, and that was the closest we'd ever felt. We used to call it Hogwarts. That was the closest I'd ever felt to being at Hogwarts until now. 
So there's our tree. Oh, let's just do our little leaves as well. Seeing as we've got the green pen out, we'll do those. And then his little basket is going to be grey. Okay. I've gone for grey granite. I might regret that decision, but we'll go for it. Grey granite's the more brown grey of the two, and I think I picked it because it's got we've got brown here, but in hindsight, I think smoky slate looks a little bit. It's always been smoky slate's always been my favourite of the grey. Um, grey granite definitely has its has its place in the world. Handle, and then we've got the red to do. Yeah, it's just, it makes it much quicker when you haven't actually got to think about what colour. I'm just putting some shading in these baubles, and then we've got his hat. I know I've got some Harry Potter fans out there, though, and even if you're not Mary, they will appreciate my. my antics okay there we go oh and the ribbon the bow is red oh i've got some exciting news for you all as well i was incredibly um lucky to be um asked i don't know if lucky is the right word but privileged honored to be asked to join the color fusers blog hop so as from january i'm going to be um joining them once a month with a color challenge um, so getting back to blogging a little bit more, I've, I've struggled with my blogging recently and my posting in Facebook, so apologies that I've been a little bit absent, I've had a bit of a break, but I'm ready to come back. And um, So yeah, I'm delighted to be able to join them from January, so that'd be great. So this is the card, it's a really quick and simple one this one, so 20 minutes, a little bit of colouring, a little bit of fun, very flat, flat layered, which I quite like, and then that's going to go on there, that's going to go on there. And there is our card. So very, very simple. Um, so Lisa, I don't know if I changed that an awful lot from your card. Actually, you'll have to you'll have to let me know. I can't remember. Um, but hopefully, I've done it justice. I think when it comes to Christmas cards, I like to have a nice range. Some that just take twenty minutes to make, if that, um, and you can batch make them. And some that take more effort and look a little bit more special. Because yeah, I've definitely got people in my life that would this something like this would suit my work colleagues um you know neighbors people who probably aren't going to appreciate it um yeah i tried it with a smaller one i'll show you both of them in a minute um and i just thought that looked that just worked really well adding it to that bigger base um and then yeah people who i know are going to appreciate my cards they'll get something that's a little bit more um taking time over uh, a little bit more special but these definitely have their place i'm just not very good at them i'm not very good at these kind of cards so that size i think is is not a hundred percent equal border all the way around but i think that's close enough and there's your christmas card so this was the one i made earlier you think you're just weird this is this is fun you loved your arms <laughs> So that's the one I made for, to begin with, but I, I think I'd made the sentiment too big. I don't think it necessarily fitted in the space there. And then when I looked at today, I was like, oh, actually, I think it does fit in the space. So you could absolutely do that. You could layer it on there if you wanted to, or you could just send it as is. So plenty of choices. You're a huge fan of the books and do have a couple of pop-up books too, but you're not a fan of the movies. Oh, Diane, that's a shame. Yeah, the, the movies I loved, and I, I used to watch them over and over, but I'd have fallen slightly out of love with them, I would say, over the last few years. Um, do, yes, I see, I looked at it today and thought I quite like it, actually, Katie, but when I made it at the time, I was like, oh, no, I've messed that up by putting that on there. Um, but no, I today when I looked at that, I thought, oh, I like that. Oh, yeah, it's just a different idea for you there. Okay, so this one's completely different. Um, yeah, completely different. But thank you, Lisa. I love that. I really loved the card when I saw it. So I thought I just had to case it. So that's um, Lisa's Loft. Um, you can search for her on um, Facebook. Uh, ten and a half, we're going to go again. No, sorry, ten, we're going to go again. 
You can search for on Facebook or the internet. Um, I don't know if you're on YouTube or Instagram. You can let us know. Clean and simple effect with a large sentiment. Yes. Yes, it is. And then that is going to go 14.3. 14.3. And then while I've got my trimmer out, I'm going to cut a piece of cardstock to 14 and uh, 10.5 by 14.8. Insta, but not YouTube yet. You will be. You will be. Oh, honestly, Diane, please be honest. Yes, please be honest. Sometimes, you know, you just got to try these things and sometimes they work, sometimes they don't. Sometimes you come back to a card later on and go, oh, actually, do you know what? I quite like that one. Yeah, you really, honestly, always be honest. Okay, so we've got a piece of cardstock. Um, and I've got a piece of paper. I've got a piece of paper. And I've ripped said piece of paper. This is just copy paper. And we are going to grab our... Oops. Not like that. I'm going to grab our messy paper, grid paper, and a small Ickle Bickle Brick Blending Brush. I love these. They're so cute. And some grey. So this is Smoky Slate that I've used. Smoky Slate. And I'm going to create a bit of a scene. Now, I have got blue on here, and I'm slightly concerned, but actually I don't think it will matter too much. If I get blue um, onto this, oh, I don't think it will matter at all. Okay, so let's line that up. And I'm just hovering it over the edge. So all of the paper is on here. And I've got my, my grey. I'm just going to take the worst of it off. And then I'm just going to lightly, lightly blend over the top of that there. Okay, and then we're just going to keep flipping and moving this paper. Um, I think I actually started higher last time and worked down so I can see what I was doing, but you know, never mind. Just, just going over the edge. You don't want to come too far up at all. Can you see how it's going to start to look like hills? Okay. So that was a bit more blurry. It does transfer some of the ink across, but it's okay. But it's going to help it to look kind of blended in when you see what we're going to do in a minute. Maybe one more. Just without that big lumpy hill. And then just I'm just gonna test something. Potentially, I think actually I'm gonna go for this. So we're gonna go for it here. So we're gonna line that back up and we're gonna blend this top bit now. So I'm just gonna close up my grey. I didn't want that. I don't want that too high. And I brought in Starry Sky and Azure Afternoon. So I've got a blending brush, big one this time. Two blending brushes, actually. Well, I did have. Yep, got two. And we are going to go with the Azure Afternoon. I'm hoping my little bit of grey is going to just blend in with that blue. Taking the worst off over on the right-hand side of the grid paper. Who is excited? We saw, um, so we saw the mini catalog for January um, the other day. For if you went to, and I think it's open to all demonstrators now. Um, but yeah, if you went to um, the on stage at home, you've got early access to seeing it. And in there is a wonderful product which you'll be able to buy as a demonstrator, or if you're a customer. You sign up to be a demonstrator in January. Is an awesome Stampin' Up branded um, mat, like glass mat, which you know I like to do quite a lot of messy cards, like blending and watercoloring. I use so much grid paper because it protects the work surface. The glass mat will enable me to just do this straight on the glass mat and then wipe it off. 
and it comes with a cleaning cloth and a little um, kind of uh, inkwell for colours and taking off your, your worst of your, your ink. And so, yeah, it looks awesome. And I'm so excited to be able to get my hands on that. Um, so excited. So that, was, that will be in the pre-order in December or for customers who join in January. So we've got our Azure Afternoon, okay, and then we're going to bring in our Starry Sky. So I've got different blending brush for this one. So I use a light one and a dark one. Blue I, blue I seem to blend with an awful lot. Um, we're going to come from the top down. So the top we're going to try and get quite dark. So we're going to go dark, dark, dark on the top. So it doesn't really matter how much ink we put there. Starry Sky is such a beautiful but underused colour and it's going soon. So if you realise you like this colour, I would grab it sooner rather than later because I think it's March, end of March, April, when the new catalogue next year, the annual catalogue will come out. This colour is part of the set that is going to be starting to disappear. So um, I'm just, as always, late to the party, just starting to use them now <laughs> in time for them to disappear. So this top bit we can just keep going over because we want that nice and dark. And then we can blend that into that azure afternoon layer. So we want to create this nice or a seamless blend. And we're going to keep going back and forth with the ink. Making that slightly dark. My, my arm starts to ache after a while. So then sadly, I'm not counting steps because every time I move, it counts my steps for me when... I blend, which is amazing. And then I'm just going to bring in this Azure Afternoon. Um, we've got a little bit of a harsh line in the middle, so I'm just going to pick up a little bit of ink and just go over that middle line just to try to blend that as nicely as we can together. I don't want any more ink, really. It's, that is dark enough. If you think you're going to come too close down to here because you really don't want to get any blue ink down here, just bring back in your grid paper. Line that up. You need to make sure it's lined up really well. But line that up and then you can just keep blending without fear. Blending without fear, hey? Okay, so I'm quite happy with that. We're going to, we're going to do some stuff to it anyway, which is going to kind of tie it all together. So let's close the ink pads up and we will bring back in our paper because we need this to act as a bit of a mask. So I've got three things and we're going to splatter this to make a starry sky. I've got, first of all, plain water so and a paintbrush. I'm just going to pick up some water on my paintbrush because we've blended this. So you, this is basic white card. Um, you don't want kind of... Um, too much water on basic white card, but look what happens when you splatter a blended background with water. It starts to react really quickly. So again, don't want too big a drops, but you can just be a little bit selective. I like to try and find a nice paintbrush to do this with. Uh, some paintbrushes work better than others. I'm using a four. Um, if you don't understand kind of um, um, watercolour brush sizes, I am running a watercolour course at the moment. I am tempted to do another one next year. I know I said I wasn't, but you know me. Um, so if you're thinking, oh, I'd love to know how to watercolour, but I just don't just don't know uh, what I'm doing with it, then I may well do another one. So reach out to me. I'll do a bit of kind of, I'm not say marketing, but I want to see if there's call for it. So before I before I put it on. So that's the one of the things we're going to do, just plain water. And that's going to create some nice kind of bits and bobs. Yes, it just wipes off. Exactly, Mary. Honestly, it's so good. These are beautiful colours, Diane. Beautiful colours. Um, and then I've got um, some Wink of Stella. Although you might notice mine's a bit different because my Wink of Stella is running out, which is annoying. So I've got a non stamping up one, but it's the same. It's just a sparkle pen. Um, you've got a couple of options. I tend to try and put some on, tend to try and put some on a block and then flick that all over. If you tap it down on your 
pen, you'll tend to get some bigger. I'm hoping I'll be able to show, hold this up to light later and you'll see properly, but you can get some bigger splats by doing that, or you can get some little splats and almost like the whole thing lights up like stars. But I want some of those bigger splats as well. And if you really kind of think, oh, I just want one right there, you just paint it on. One right there. And then the third thing that I've got, we are going all out with this. I've got some Craft Whisper White ink. They've had this years. Um, and then I've just put some on a block and I've just watered it down with some water. And then I'm just going to splatter that on as well. So it dries, it goes on, it looks really white when you put it on. Um, but it does dry more muted, so it's a bit harder. It is a bit harder to see than when you first put it on. And you can put as much or as little on as you want. I'm making this look like a really starry, snowy background. And then that is our background there. So I'm just going to bring in the one I did earlier because that's going to I'm going to leave that to dry. And then all I've done is stamped the sentiment down in the bottom left hand corner. I don't have to worry about getting that straight on camera, either, which is amazing. Um, I'm just going to bring in some fresh grid paper because we're basically done with making a mess. And then you can see a little bit better. I've got a mat of um, kind of. I was thinking um, it's silver foil basically, it's just a bit miry, miry board. And that's going to go over there. And that can glue straight down onto the miry board. I have just cut out, um, I've gutted it. Um, I think that's the right word, I think I got it right today. Um, and the reason I've done that is just so that I can use a little bit from the inside to cut some stars with. Gorgeous, isn't it, Katie? Gorgeous, gorgeous, gorgeous. Yeah. And again, I've tried to keep these cards really flat. I'm really conscious at the moment of postage costs because they've just gone up. Um, in was it? Or was it October they went up? So, you know, sending Christmas cards out is expensive enough anyway. Let alone if you've got to send them large letter. So I'm tending to try and keep them a lot of them as flat as possible. So I'm not putting this on dimensionals. Of course, I've made some which are absolutely not flat and will require large less postage, but just been told off for the mess on the table. I suppose you've got to tidy up there. <laughs> Bless you. So I think that's straight. It's going to go straight down. And then I've got this cute little guy um, and I've just stamped him and I've just cut him out so far. I wanted to see how the card worked with him. So I'm going to grab some smoky slate just instead of that, that one there. I'm going to do a little rhino. And these are the stamping blends, so the alcohol markers. Lots of you I know who know how to use these. And it means you can blend those bits together. The light and the dark and get some a bit of life. It brings some life into your colouring rather than just being 2D and flat, which it, it runs the risk of being if you don't put this dimension in. Or rather don't give it any dimension with the shading. Okay, and then we've got his head, and again, just coming around the underside of the chin is going to be in shadow, and the back of the head, and then the ears. I'm going to keep it fairly light on the shading, especially with this grey. I 
I am. Um, I'm literally just before I jumped on live, about ten minutes before I came live, and I've just got to remember not to colour his eye in. Um, realised that I'd left all the clothes that I was due to that are due to go to the charity shop. I've sorted them all. Um, they they are ready to go, but haven't gone. And I dumped them all down by the side of Russ's bed while he was away. And all of the stuff out of my craft room, which is not yet sorted. There's just a few piles. All of that had gone in his craft room as well. And I was like, I think I need to get in there before he gets back. And uh, sort that out. Because as understanding and lovely as he is, nobody wants to come home from being away and find they can't actually access the side of the bed because it's got my charity shop closed down there. So I've just put a tiny, teeny bit of smoky slate and I'm just blending that in because the horn is going to be kind of white, but I want to just show it with a bit of depth. And the same with the ice skates as well. Just a little bit of grey down there. Literally the tiniest kind of dot. And then just blend that in and it just gives a look of grey. I think when you colour with the colour lifter it can make it look a little bit off-white as well which is nice. Uh, I just haven't got a clue what colours I'm going to colour this in. Well I should have thought about this. So let's go for shaded spruce because it's always already out. I haven't done his arm so I need to colour his arm in. Grey. Did you get the bits moved or is that no I no I've done it. Yeah, I've I did do it with they're literally just they're still in the bedroom, but they're just actually like alongside the wardrobe rather than by his bed and the stuff from his room I've just moved into my room. So it still needs sorting and it can't stay there, but yeah, I thought maybe maybe that's a bit better. <laughs> Let's move you down so you can see what I'm doing a little bit better. And then the ribbon I'm just doing in real red again. Little ribbon bow. So when you colour, you realise you've missed bits. So I've just missed the base of that wreath that needs to be in green. And then his scarf, I think I'm going to do um, red and yellow. So that's real red and daffodil delight. I'm just adding a bit of shading to that bow, even though it's really small. Okay, so let's go real red and then put some stripes in here. Like a football scarf. <laughs> you won't know. Yeah, he will be. He will be so tired. He probably wouldn't notice. You're right, but thought it was only nice it was the nice thing to do um, I've taken the rubbish out kitchen's relatively tidy everything's relative right so I'm, I'm trying to do bright colors so against the that blue that this really pops um we'll see how we get on so um, we'll do a yellow do we do yellow birds I think we might do yellow birds actually Little chicks. Don't really want them brown. And then they've got all their little hats and scarves on, which is so cute. Grey little headphones. Beaks need to be orange beaks or no, dark, dark yellow. Okay. So cute. And then we'll go for some red hats and scarves. on him and then should we bring in another colour what about um, fresh freezer? Nah. 
Oh, I'll tell you what we can do. Let's go balmy blue. Because he could look, he can be a little boy chick. A little balmy blue hat. Hopefully that will tie in a little bit. So we'll have a blue present as well, I think. I'm uh, never quite sure with these kind of bows whether to colour underneath. Oh, sorry, you can't see. Whether to colour underneath them or not. Oh, no, it's sticky. sticky. I think we do because it's just a ribbon bow. So that's going to go under there like that. Potentially could use... Um, this would have been a better colour to go for. Look, because it would match the azure afternoon. So let's just layer over that. This is the dark. And then the light. An ombre. Ah, oh, thanks, Carol. Takes a while. Like it always takes seems to take longer than I expect it to. My colouring, but not as long as some people. Um, I'm I'm not as patient as some of the artists out there. Um, in some respects, I wish I was, but I'm not. Um, so I do have my own kind of style of colouring, like everybody does. I think. Just trying to do this as gently as possible because these are really thin lines could add that with the pencils as well but and then I'm just going to add a bit of dark underneath the presents just to bring that to life so two more presents uh, what colours are we going to go for decisions decisions I think we'll just go for red on this one because um I haven't had, I haven't actually got much red and it's further away from the little chick's red up there. So we'll just put some dark down there. Ah, thank you so much. Yeah, I'm um I've always been, my dad's always said I'm an 20% effort for 80% results kind of person. I will generally tend to find the easiest way of doing something that gives me good enough, <laughs> good enough results. Um, it, I really struggled to put that extra 80% effort in to get what I consider to be 20% better. <laughs> ah, hey Mandy, nice to see you this evening. Yeah, it's all right. No problem at all. Oh, I've got to do his little scarf. I might do his little scarf grey just to tie him with his headphones, actually. There we go. So I've got one more present to do. I don't really want to do it yellow, though. So I've got blue, I could do it green. Yeah, let's go green because that's going to match the wreath and that'll just tie that colour in. So the dark green over here. And then we'll blend that in. There we go. Earmuffs, that's what it, yeah, that, that's, yeah, they probably are earmuffs. Yeah, concede. <laughs> so let's zoom you out a little bit. My piece is actually now dry now, so I should be able to add that to my kind of sparkly, shiny card background. Stumping up doo-doo silver card, I just haven't really got an awful lot left. Um, it's on this, it's on the online exclusives. Um, uh, I just this this brings out the added colour in the in the um, rhinoceros. Um, but yeah, stamping up. Do do silver card. It's just not in the catalogue anymore, so it's just online. Um, you'll be able to find it. You can order it your normal way. However, you do do your ordering normally. You don't need to order these online exclusives online. You can still let your demonstrator know that you'd like them, um, but they are just found online. So. Just like um, a lot of retailers have only got an online store. Stamping up, we've got a catalogue and an online store. So that's that one there. 
I am going to use dimensionals for this little dude, I think. And he's going to go just like that. Doesn't he look cute? Doesn't he pop against that background? Oh, yeah, do watch how to make that background because it's it's really easy. It's really easy, actually. Oh, thanks, Lisa. It is. It's it come together really nicely, didn't it? Um, I think I'm just going to do the same stamp um, as I was on my last one. I don't know, actually. I don't know. I haven't decided how I'm going to finish this off yet. Um, so I've just die cut from silver foil. And that was what I kind of gutted a little bit out of the middle for. Um, some of these. And these are from the Merriest Trees bundle. Beautiful, beautiful um, stars in the background. And I thought they would just go nicely like that. So a little pop of glue. Don't need much at all. Just a little pop in the middle. Try and get a little bit up the top and well. I could just do a dob and a dob. And then turn that over. And pop that down there. That's why I said. I did say I had two completely different cards for you. <laughs> Very different cards. Um, this was inspired by Verena Shapiro, um, who had done a beautiful blended background. And I just thought, yes. And then I thought, oh, I could make some hills. Um, she just had a really a bit of a top card and that bit was blended. Um, I just suddenly thought, wouldn't these guys look great? Wouldn't with it pulling a sledge on the snow? So um, that's where I ended up. Half an hour before I needed to go live. <laughs> because I've been playing Harry Potter when I should have been preparing. Not today. I've been at work all day. But... And then we've had Team Zoom this week. This week. We've, oh, gosh, we've had it. What do we have? We had a Team Zoom on Monday to see the catalogue. And then I had something Tuesday night online, and then we had a team Zoom on Wednesday as well. So it's been literally full on all week since Friday, um, and it's not not looking set to stop. Okay, so we've got our card base uh, somewhere. Uh, I'm going to need to get another one, but that's okay because I need to make lots of cards anyway. So the only downside with this size card is you only get one out of a sheet of A4 card stock. You know, it's a sacrifice. You need to figure out if you're willing to make that sacrifice. Um, I actually bought these. So these are pre-bought card bases. The only thing I will say is that um, it's okay for a card like this, but for this card here, actually the card stock doesn't match the basic white. It's a different colour, so... Um, but this one is because it's ink blended, you don't really tell. So that's my card there. Uh, that's that like that. And he's going to go on here like this. And I just want a sentiment down here, I think. Um, and that's where I went with this one. Happy Christmas wishes. I feel like I want to put it on a die cut and embellish it, but I need to realize that actually that's not always the right thing to do so I think I'm going to put a few dimensionals on the back of him because I think he deserves to be well, I don't know why that's gone all gone all red on the back ah uh, thank you Thank you for the love for my little wino. Oh, come on. Come on, dude. So he's going to go something like that. Just popping out, dragging his sled along. That's going to stick down on there. And then you can add a sentiment should you choose to. I can't actually, I genuinely can't decide if I want to or not. Um, Never ever seem to have the right sentiment either.
So I've got this one, but I think that's too big. Too big. Christmas. Oh, actually, it could just go. Oh, that could work, couldn't it? Christmas greetings down the bottom. I don't know whether to risk trying it. That's the problem. That's the problem. This is the this is the problem I have always when card making is you've done such a nice thing, and then all of a sudden it's like, do I risk it? Um, and I might I might get away with doing it in starry sky. Just testing. I like to do a lot of testing. I'm going to go for it. I'm going to try and make sure it's straight. So I'm just going to do another test. Okay. Feeling brave. It doesn't help that I've already stuck the, the guy on, but. I don't know. See, I never know. It's so hard. If you stamp your sentiments on vellum or clear sheets, you can try them out first. You can, Katie. Yes, it's very wise. Let's take that away because sometimes I get overwhelmed. Oh, yeah. That, that what works, actually. I was just getting a bit overwhelmed by the amount of stuff that was on the grid paper, I think. There we go. So I think we're done. I think we're done. You could keep going and embellish that, but I don't think it needs it. I do struggle to know where to stop. Yeah, that is an absolutely great tip. Stamping it onto vellum and then trying it out. I've, made, I've managed to get it a little bit far over to the right, but I'm, I'm okay with that. And the other option was to put it on a, um, a kind of panel, like a die cut. That's what I wanted to do. Put it on a die cut panel and have it up the top, but I felt it needed something down the bottom there we go there he is that's a little bit lost the sentiment's a little bit lost but that one's a little bit easier to see anyway there we go so we have two cards or two and a half cards there's the other one so three at two and a half we're saying we actually we actually like this one so there's our three. Ah, oh, thanks Mandy. Uh, Oh, I'm glad you like it. Honestly, I'm so unsure sometimes when it comes to, and gems, sentiments and gems really struggle. Um, but I, I don't think I'm alone there. I think there's a few of us in the, in the struggle camp with sentiment and gems. Um, but yeah, thank you very much indeed. I will be not here next Friday, next Thursday because I've got to go to work. Annoying. I'm on nights next week, but yeah. I will be, I should be around the week after, I think. Um, I'll let you know. I'll always put a shout out in my VIP Facebook group, which is the Songbird's Nest. So if you're not a member of the Songbird's Nest um, and you want to come and play, then please do. Um, I'm going to be posting some more. I've been a bit absent the last few weeks, but I'm going to be posting some more in there. So, um, yeah, definitely struggle with gems. It's like the amount of times they go on and off, on and off, on and off the card. It's ridiculous. Uh, thank you very much indeed for spending your Thursday evening with me. I really appreciate your time. Um, and I will see you all again really soon. Thanks, everybody. Take care. Bye for now.